Thanks for staying with us. The University of Utah is no stranger to loudness as the must is nationally recognized by some of the biggest figures in college football. But now we have scientific data showing that their impact, that they do have an impact on the game. So today we have Jamie Farrell, a research associate professor of the Department of Geology and Geophysics at the U. What a title. Thank you for joining us here today, Jamie. Thank you. All right. So let's first talk about what does the data show? Well, you know, we're, we have a seismometer. Uh, we installed, installed a seismometer in the Rice Cycle Stadium. Okay. And what it, what it measures is ground shaking. Um, of course, seismometers are meant to, you know, record earthquakes, ground shaking from earthquakes. Um, but they record anything that makes the ground shake. And, of course, a stadium filled with 50,000 plus people is going to make the ground shake. So we record those signals related to different things happening in the game. And what does the data show then? Well, we've done it for uh, two games so far, okay. the, the two home games this season. Um, the largest signals we've seen were from the, the first game, the University of Florida game, because there was, you know, record attendance. Woo, um, yes, the there was. Um, there were as many people at the Weber State game, so we got a lot of smaller signals for that game. And can you compare, okay, is this what we're looking at, Jamie? Mm -hmm. We're kind of far away, but if you can read that, yeah, third so down, yeah, go through and kind of tell us what we're seeing. So these are different signals. These are mainly from the Florida game. Okay. Um, so we can see things like, uh, so this one's showing like the first touchdown pass that, that you scored on the very first play of their offensive game. Yes. And, um, and you can see different things. Um, when the biggest signal we actually see from the game, both games so far, has been when the youth run out of the tunnel at the very beginning Ooh. of the game. And what we found is the reason why that's the biggest signal is because um, during that time, over the loudspeakers, they play music. And music makes people jump up and down in oh, unison. yes. So that makes the signals a lot bigger. Okay, tell me again, where is the, the reader of this? Like, is this in the ground or it's in the stands? It's in, on the ground floor. It's on the ground. Okay. So it's underneath. Literally shaking the earth. Yes, yes. So it's, it's on um, the west side of the stadium underneath the tower. Oh, my goodness. Okay, tell us where you got this idea. This was your idea, right? Yeah, well. To our, bridge our, the university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been done at other stadiums before. Um, you know, the most famous one is uh, in Seattle um, during a Seattle Seahawks game. Um, during a touchdown, they call it the beast, the beast quake. <laughs> and that's really the first time where, um, you know, this idea of using uh, urban size monitors to record ground shaking related to this kind of stuff happened. And then um, just earlier in the year, there's been some, at the same stadium, they recorded signals related to a Taylor Swift concert at the same stadium. Oh, wow. So we thought this would just be like a fun project to do. Um, of course, you know, our, our main goal at the University of Utah Seismograph Stations is to um, locate and uh, report earthquakes that happened in the right. Utah region. Um, but we just thought this would be a fun project to, you know, not only, you know, bring what we do to light to the general public, um, but to, to show, you know, what kind of service we provide to the, to the people of Utah in relation to, um, you know, identifying earthquakes that are happening in the region. Which is something that we should be aware of. Tell us real quick then, we only have a little bit left. Jamie, how does, how does the, the numbers that you read here at the U compare to other big colleges that are also doing the same report? Are, are, are we seeing the same type charting? Uh, we don't know that for sure yet. Okay. We haven't looked at that yet. Okay. We haven't compared to other, other places. But we do know that the shaking from the Weber State game was about three times less than it was from the Florida game. And... Um, you know, we have a, some pictures on our website that we've made for this project that show you can see the same signals and just due to less people in the stands, that's yes. why the shaking is less. And can you put it into a like type of earthquake, a, a percentage of an earthquake or not at that? Not, at this not right now. I mean, it's okay. important to know that these are not earthquakes. These no, are ground shaking no. from the stadium shaking. Um, and, you know, it turns out it's really hard to you know, uh, calculate an earthquake from something that's not an earthquake. Okay, so you can't compare, so, like the stadium is almost like a 2.0 earthquake. We have another seismometer on campus that's about a half a mile from here. Okay. And that station has been running for a long time, and it recorded the 5.7 earthquake back in 2020. Right. So we could compare those signals, the signals that that's recording from the stadium versus the okay. other earthquake. Well, that's just maybe an idea. I'd be curious to see how they compare. Thank you so much. Is this a permanent thing? And then we'll have it'll to It'll be out. there this season. It's not permanent, but it'll okay. be there the whole season this Throughout year. Throughout the season, we'll yeah. have to check in again and see if we can do any comparisons. And thank you so much again for your time here today.